Well, no, uh, it's uh, after all those uh, grand uh, buildings were were down down and dirty with a bit of uh, a bit of vernacular here. Um, as you can see, uh, the building uh, a building like this can be read re remarkably well just by uh, a, a careful look at the uh, exterior. As you'll see here, we've got the upper end. Here we've got the hall with the hall window. Here is the cross passage. Here is a later addition, uh, probably similar in date to this uh, later addition. Uh, and we have the service end just here and off screen there, uh, an addition to the service end. Uh, so this is uh, this is a, a building that where is that wears its uh, function uh, on the exterior of the building, and there's even a chimney stack slightly leaning here, which was probably in the 17th century, uh, to the corner of the uh, of the room here. Um, and this is the building we've just been looking at, Little Queb. Uh, one point that I wanted to make first of all it's a very general point and that is in Herefordshire um, our buildings are all aligned a bit like uh, magnet uh, magnets pointing north but in this case they're all pointing with their upper ends towards the southwest quadrant um, and that's a uh, that's an important uh, an important thing to remember um, uh, it seems to apply to Herefordshire um, it applies in uh, Shropshire to a certain extent, uh, although a lot of work has yet to be done. And uh, it is it breaks down when we look at uh, uh, at Wales because Wales appears to be different simply because the topography um, means that the uh, winds from the southwest quadrant uh, are not necessarily going to be. Uh, blowing in, in from that direction but by the time it reaches a, a house. This is also Great Queb and as you can see it has the upper end towards the southwest uh, quadrant as well. Um, I, I simply mention this because it is a, 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 the, uh, the best end of the building in the absence of uh, other uh, features. Um, Little Queb uh, is also intriguing because it has an inserted ceiling here, uh, which was inserted in the late uh, 16th century. And uh, of course, when you, when you insert a ceiling, you start having an upper floor, you start having to put windows in. And of course, it, it opens up the potential for uh, applying uh, a, a gable to the side of the building, uh, as you see here. And, uh, and further windows just, just here, so floors throughout. Uh, the orientation of buildings was just the result of uh, some research that I did uh, uh, years ago, it seems, um, in Pembridge in uh, Herefordshire. And here we are looking uh, down the uh, West Street uh, with some children playing in the street. Um, they don't do that now. The lorries are too fast and too heavy uh, rumbling through this, but uh, it's, uh, it's a lovely scene. I just want to note this building here. Um, this, is, uh, this is West End Farm. And as you can see, it has a jetty and is looking rather fine uh, and rather uh, a rather high status looking building. Um, this is Pembridge, and here you see all the uh, all the upper ends of these buildings pointing either west or south. Uh, um, here they're south because they're in the market area, but obviously the constraint of the of the road uh, that they did alongside um, ha has limited the. Uh, the ability to really point uh, to to the uh, southwest. But they clearly were concerned to get the, uh, the, the lower end or the service end uh, somewhere where it's cool. Uh, and this seems to be a, um, a, a widely used uh, constraint in, uh, in Herefordshire and other counties. And it's, it would be interesting to, uh, to do some research in other counties. And uh, I think that has yet to be done. Um, we're just going to take a peep at the building we've just uh, just considered. 
and here it is, West End Farm, now all exposed. And here is the, uh, here is the, the jetty on the upper end. This is a, a cruck framed hall house. Uh, here you see the eaves level of the original building. It's been raised in height when a, a floor was inserted. Here is the cross passage door, which is still in place, or at least the, the access. And here is the service end. So it is very much a complete uh, building. But uh, this, if we take a different view of this, uh, here, is the, here is the jetty. And we just take a close look at the jetty. Uh, and as you can see, I hope uh, this uh, timber is just butted up to the post and there's a bracket underneath. And this is an entirely applied uh, jetty um, done for reasons of, uh, uh, of status. Uh, one can only interpret it that way. Uh, the gain in space is minute. And uh, if we look inside, here is, the, here is the front window now. And here is the original front window uh, of the building before the jetty uh, was applied. You can see we have posts, uh, position for posts and, uh, and, and also for the uh, mullions along here and even a shutter slide uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in the beam which uh, survives. Uh, this is another building that again obeys the, uh, the, the, the Southwest Quadrant rule. Here it is surrounded by uh, a, a maze of, uh, of, of tin, of tin of tin buildings, um, and here it is, uh, saved by ancient uh, uh, corrugated iron roof. This is the upper end. Uh, that is the service end, the lower end, and we can just look inside. Here is the uh, principal cruck frame, and uh, and here is the the upper end of the hall, just here. And, uh, and then we have the solar uh, bay at the far end. Sometimes uh, this rule of Southwest Quadrant doesn't apply and it doesn't apply to this uh, Upper Welson in Erdersley. As you can see, uh, one glance at this will uh, suggest very, very strongly that we have an upper end just here, uh, a very large crosswing uh, and a diminutive hall and uh, what might be a service end. Um, and just here, an addition of a, a modern kitchen, uh, still quite an old piece of building, but still it does have the, uh, the kitchen there. Um, if we look at the ground plan, you'll see this is the uh, crosswing, the big large crosswing. Here is the upper end of the, of the here is the, uh, possible service end, but in fact, it turns out to be the upper end. Um, I suppose if you were looking at a building and you, you, you had moved from the medieval period uh, into the, uh, you're into the 16th century uh, or even the 17th, and you have the ability to put glass in your windows, um, you, are, you are going to uh, reconsider the use of uh, the building. Um, and you're not going to worry about putting uh, your uh, crosswing at the wrong end of the building um, because you can keep it nice and cosy. Uh, and that appears to be the case here. If we look at this particular uh, position in the building, um, you'll see where a door head was fitted to a doorway adjacent to the side wall of the building. Uh, and this door head marks one of the one of the uh, access routes into the upper end, the original upper end of the building. So, and these are the ceiling beams in that upper end of the building. And if we take a close look, you can just see the chevron ornament on the uh, on the underside of the uh, timbers. Um, you can also see diagonal saw marks, which uh, is rather nice uh, indication of their 15th century or earlier date. This uh, large house, uh, stake house in Erdislo, uh has just changed hands. It uh, is about to be uh, refurbished. It has fallen into a rather a poor state. This picture was taken 
I think in about 1890, as you can see, the river is about to overflow or looks like it. And certainly the swans are going to just be able to walk straight out without climbing a bank. Um, here you see a crosswing, a small crosswing. And here at the other end, you see a large crosswing. And here is the hall in the center with a, a, a chimney stack, a rather fine chimney stack. And also, uh, obviously, a kitchen range running back here with chimneys, uh, 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 which apply to that as well. Um, and if we look at the position of this, you'll see why it's uh, the water level is rather high. It's very close to the river. It doesn't flood, apparently, so a good choice of site. Um, here is the uh, upper end towards the southwest quadrant. Uh, but um, this appears to be this end now, and this has become the upper end. So there's been a change of ends. Uh, we can look at a, a ground plan of this. This is the kitchen, the later kitchen, which has been applied to this crosswing, two bay crosswing. Uh, here is the is the hall, um, the upper end of the hall. This is the lower end of the hall, uh, and we can just take a look. This is the principal truss over the centre of the hall, really rather grand, and at first floor level, as you can see, there it is. Um, a, a beautiful, uh, a beautiful arch. Uh, taking a closer look, um, you can tell that this is the upper end, if only that it has the 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 higher the higher status uh, the higher status ceiling, um, and this is the lower end with the lower status ceiling, and this is the front door now, but originally the cross passage ran through here. And this is the ceiling in the in the upper end of the hall, which has been uh, inserted in, I think, in the late 16th century, with these very uh, deep chamfers. Although there is an interesting fact that the chamfers just stop at the side wall. There is no, um, there are no stops. But on one side, stops have been applied. I haven't seen this before. Uh, here they are, applied stops, um, rather cumbersome uh, uh, applied stops, which suggests that somebody wanted it to look a bit fancier and uh, and started uh, putting stops on. I think maybe they, it, it, there were stops all round made in this way. Uh, some of them may have fallen off. Uh, so, and they may be actually 19th century work applied to uh, an earlier um, system. Uh, if we just have a look at the lower end of the of the hall, there were there were originally three doorways uh, in the classic arrangement of a central doorway leading through to an external kitchen, uh, and then one into the buttery and that and the other into a pantry. Uh, originally, this had a uh, an axial service end, just as it had an axial solar end because this crosswing is later, uh, as you can see for this little step in here, um, they haven't taken it right back to flush with the end of the hall when they built the crosswing. Um, a rather intriguing little bit of evidence. And if we look at these uh, three doors, um, here are two of them, uh, a rather nice composition with an organ <laughs> fitted into the central doorway, which is obviously being blocked. Um, a fire extinguisher that absolutely certainly no longer works. Um, and these decorative door heads, uh, and I always find this fascinating to see decorative door heads into a service end. You sort of wonder why that might be. It's almost to celebrate the service end. Um, but I'm sure it's because they were quite simply visible from the inside of the hall. Uh, so you really needed to, uh, to make them look uh, a bit fancy. Um, uh, the other doorway has gone because uh, later changes have been made, including the insertion of a staircase at this end. Um, uh, and I just wanted to show you Hugh and Kellen uh, in uh, Monmouth, Monmouth shirt. Uh, this is a, a hall with a crosswing. 
uh, and here you see before it was refurbished uh, more recently. This is the cross passage. Um, and here inside is the, is the hall, really rather splendid. Uh, it's had an inserted floor, of course, uh, so you're seeing it at first floor level. But here are the fancy uh, doorways to the service end, buttery and pantry, uh, and really a, a remarkable celebration of uh, decoration at the, uh, the, in, in the cross passage, in effect, but obviously visible from the hall itself. Uh, so they're making, uh, making a thing of it. Um, sometimes uh, the service end of the building is not a service end, and uh, that is the case, or seems to be the case, with the old priory in Titley. This is right near the Welsh border, um, and here we see a, a, a drawing just to illustrate. This is the upper end, which is now gone in the, in the present building. It was removed when the adjacent church was expanded. Uh, and then we have a two bay hall and then what would have been the service end or appears to have been the service end. But I just want to show you, here is the screen, uh, uh, cross passage and the entrance to the hall is through the center between the, uh, between the uh, screens. And we have a single doorway to the service end, which is a, a little unusual, um, normally it would be as we know, into two, usually two separate chambers, uh, a battery and pantry. But in this case, I think this, this um, end of the building, the service end of the building, was used to house animals. Um, and the normal reading of uh, a, 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 an end, a, 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 the end of a building to house animals is that um, you were keeping your farm animals overnight. But I think it is possible in this case that this was a, a, a housing for uh, visitors to the house uh, and that it may have been in some way used for people um, passing through and, uh, and maybe not for animals. But as you can see, there's a, a, a nice little uh, um, uh, mark on the one side of the of the doorway and also these very heavy timbers on each side um, which would be unnecessary if it were just human beings passing through but uh, if you're wheeling through a donkey into uh, into the end of the building um, that might be the adopt uh, and it looks like an inserted uh, an inserted ceiling um, an inserted ceiling in the uh, in the lower end of the uh, of the building this is one that maybe has a similar um, I'm just looking at the internet connection as I think we're probably all right um, this is a, a building at uh, Lyonbrook Lingen again on the Welsh border very much on the Welsh border um, and here is a cross wing, we have a hall, we have a cross passage, and we have the service end just here, or what appears to be a service end, but um, it was, it lost its uh, cross wing um, back in the 1960s, and as you can see, uh, the business is in progress. Um, here is a reconstruction of the cross wing, uh, we had the hall, cross passage, and another doorway into what would have been the service end uh, in the side of, the, uh, of, the, of what appears to be a service end. Uh, this is a, a plan. Here is the hall, here is the cross passage, and we have this rather strange bay here, which appears to be a service bay because um, this is the existing arrangement at the lower end of the hall. So we're looking at, uh, at, um, at the cruck frame at the lower end. It looks as if there are two doorways or originally two doorways, but uh, this is all the evidence indicates that this is totally incorrect. Um, the center post carries just here 
a very fancy stop. And if we look at a drawing, this is undoubtedly the original arrangement of the lower air. Uh, and it really does appear to be a buyer end, which would have housed animals. And the animals were not being brought into the buyer from the cross passage because there were rails across. And uh, this must have been for feeding the animals in the cross passage, uh, in, the, uh, in the buyer end. There was also a doorway above which um, led to a, a, a chamber, uh, which must have had some kind of ladder access from the cross passage, um, and maybe was, a, was a, for keeping uh, straw and such like for feeding the animals below. We, we, we just don't know. Um, and here we see the cross passage doorway with a, a different door head to the previous one. Uh, I, I can't be certain about the door head, so uh, I've tried various uh, de designs for that. Um, a, small, uh, a small window here. Uh, so where was the service uh, arrangement? And the simple um, answer to that is this, this building was on a sloping ground and there was a cellar beneath the cross passage, which is now gone. And the cellar had access at a lower level uh, for um, obviously for use as a service end. And this end is undoubtedly in my mind for animals. Now this doorway might be seen as too small for animals. So if we look at one end of the building, this is the entrance for the, for the animals. Um, this is a doorway here. You can see it's offset the framing. And up here, there is actually um, uh, another of the, uh, the marks that we find in uh, buildings that uh, are used for uh, animals. Um, Other uses are made of uh, the lower end of, the, uh, of a building, and here's Walsop Thorn Farmhouse. Um, this is the upper end, this is the upper cross wing. Um, this is a, a late 16th, early 17th century house, it hasn't been treating dated, uh, with a, a storied uh, hall, of course, in the, in the middle. And this is the, this is the service end. Uh, as you can see, it's, uh, acquired an external staircase, uh, which is certainly not original uh, to, the, to the building. Uh, and this is the cross passage, uh, which is still now the doorway to the kitchen, the existing kitchen, and a later uh, access made through here at the uh, upper end of the, of the hall. Um, but I wanted to show you this simply because uh, at the lower end, uh, as with many farmhouses, we have hop kilns applied. And this is the upper floor was used um, uh, for, um, for work associated with the hop kilns. Um, and here is the kitchen, which is at the lower end of the, of the hall. And this is the, the upper end. Um, at the upper end, these are the stops that are used. Uh, a really quite elaborate quarter round um, with a little step and then uh, a, a, a really nice uh, OG stop. And here is the quarter round uh, around one of the fireplaces in the upper end. And looking from outside in uh, way back in the 1950s, you can see the kilns in operation here, applied to the side of the service wing, uh, just there. And here they are today. And again, the service end just here. And these were rather fine chimneys marking the upper end of the house. But what is really quite fascinating is that in the service end, first floor of the service end, what remains of it, um, we have really rather fancy stops, um, which suggest that it wasn't really uh, the upper floor, wasn't really used for service uh, purposes, and that it had some status, some considerable status. Uh, and there's quite a few buildings I've come across where the, the upper floor of the service end is undoubtedly used for um, uh, for higher status uh, function uh, than just uh, servants. 
Boeing's get used for so many different things, especially when uh, uh, they're used as a farmhouse. And this is one at, uh, at uh, Clifford, which is right on the edge of the, of the border to Wales. And um, you'd think that this was a, a stone uh, building, but originally it was timber framed. And it, it contains a hall just here uh, with a service bay. So there's the hall and this large crosswing at the upper end of the of the hall you can see also i should say um, uh, that uh, right that always happens a moment you can see also that the uh, the upper end is towards the southwest quadrant uh, which is uh, which is quite clear here um, if we go into the roof, will we see it was a high status building indeed, uh, early uh, 15th century in date. Uh, I just wanted to show you this, just to show you that uh, these buildings gave for many purposes. How are we doing for time, uh, Adrian? Are we, uh, are we okay? Um, I think we are. Um, just here in the roof, uh, you can see a hoist. And it's quite obvious that uh, this was uh, used for grain storage or similar farming activity at some time. Um, and I love the way this is fitted into the roof, uh, um, very securely, I should say, however, it, even though it looks uh, rather precarious um, and clearly was used for hauling uh, grain either into the roof, but probably uh, up to first floor level from what is now the, the, the kitchen of the, uh, of the present building. Um, but it does indicate how many different functions these rooms and things, particularly, I should say, when they become farmhouses. Um, as, as farming methods change, so, do the, to, so does the, the function of uh, different parts of the, uh, of the house. Um, I just wanted to mention one or two buildings uh, which have um, a, a, an unusual arrangement of uh, an upper room. Um, this is a shop row in Webley with what appear to be lock-up shops on the ground floor. One there, one just here, one here originally, and one here. Uh, so this is a row of four shops with upper chambers, which were not accessed from the shops, but from a balcony along the back of the building. And originally there was a balcony along here, which has now been enclosed by a, 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 a an extension of the roof uh, to form a, a cat slide. Um, and it has always puzzled me that, that these upper rooms were not heated um, at all. Uh, and they only had one single window at the front and at the back, actually, this is a later addition on, on the side. Um, and the, the puzzle is what they were used for, whether they were actually for use for sleeping simply nothing nothing more um, as an addition to the uh, to the main building uh, and here is the shop front the, the absolutely classic arrangement of two shop two shop windows with shutters and a, and and across a, a, a doorway into the shop in one of these there was smoke blackening on the in the uh, in the roof of course it would have been open to the ridge the smoke blackening, which does suggest that uh, they were using uh, a hearth at first floor level. And we find this also at 16 Corn Square, where there is a row of uh, medieval shops along here, and the upper chambers were unheated. Um, and here you see a front view of it with lock-up shops on the ground floor originally, uh, four of them. And then at the back, there was a, 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 an external uh, a balcony leading to single rooms above each of the, of the shops and again, unheated. Uh, so it really is quite a puzzle. And finally, the, uh, the, the last one I want to show you is at 40 Broad Street in Dempster. Uh, if we go through this arch at the back here, we arrive in the yard to a building which is weatherboarded. And uh, if we take off the weatherboarding, we see that it is a timber frame building 
at the end here, which has been tree ring dated to 1500. And here we have a, a covered balcony uh, along here and also a covered way on the ground floor as well, um, with windows here and here to the ground floor rooms and also windows up here to the ground floor rooms and two children sitting just here, which is, uh, which is charming. Um, this is the arrangement of that building, uh, which is really uh, uh, quite unusual and, and intriguing. But again, single rooms unheated. Uh, and, and this may have been uh, where people were staying overnight. And it may have been, of course, uh, um, some kind of uh, 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 some kind of uh, uh, yeah arrangement to uh, to cater for visitors. Uh, and just I'll close there with a picture of uh, a nineteenth-century picture of uh, the 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 people who were very proud of their uh, balcony along here, which is uh, which is much of which is still there. And, uh, and there they are. And I have absolutely no idea who they are and uh, what they were doing, but uh, there we are. So that's, uh, that's been a, a, a ramble through a, a little bit of the, uh, of the Welsh border, but of course there's a, there's a huge amount of it to, to say on the subject of, of, of room use, as, uh, as indeed Adrian, you had suggested right at the beginning. So uh, there we are.